Hello and welcome to Soli Singleton episode 192. I am your host Brad, this is my co-host Eric. How's it going? And today we have an episode that's been six weeks in the making now. <laughs> yeah, this is a bigger one. It's a new cube. Yeah, without any further ado, let's talk about a new cube. Sounds good. Hi right, Brad, which cube is this? <laughs> So if you would like to follow along at home, you can find this on Cube Cobra with the idea of the Grand Cube, all one word. And there should be a link in the show notes. So yeah, this is the Grand Cube. It is a $1,000 cube as far as budget goes. A couple of years ago, there was several emails about this and some comments on Reddit threads and stuff where people said they liked the Miser's Cube but wanted to see what cube could look like at $1,000. And... I get it. It makes sense. I do as well, because a lot of times when you look at our budget cubes, it can be harder to see how much more work has to go into it price-wise before it gets up to what you want your cube to be, whatever that may be. Right. So something closer to your finish line might be a little better to see. The idea here is to go up in scale from the starter cube at its 120 bucks, the misers at its $500, including sleeves and a box to put it in, to now the grand cube. You've got a grand to spend on cards. What do you buy? Right. So it is one of those that like the budget restrictions are loosened enough that we can have some of the more iconic and expensive cards, but it's also not just like, okay, you have fetch duel. Well, OG duels are a bit expensive. So you're making a few compromises, but it's very few. There's less of the, I have to defend this card because it costs $2. It's like, well, that's fine. (laughs) We've got the budget. Well, you say we've got the budget. Here's the deal. It's a 450 card cube. We only have $1,000 to play with. Do the math. You've only got a bit over $2 a card to play with. That is true. Now, it's not that bad because honestly, a lot of great cards are very cheap. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking at like red and white creatures, other than like the top, top tier, they're pretty free. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and like even top tier spells, lightning bolt's still only a buck twenty five. The newest printing of chain lightning is only twenty cents. So each of those that are like, yeah, these are good cards. They should be in there. Make it so that you know the the average two dollars for a card. We can now put in cards that are ten bucks without going. Oh my god, that's our whole budget. So with that budget restriction in mind, what was the idea and what's actually in this cube first let's talk about what's not in the cube okay well i mean we've got fetches and og duels those aren't in the cube got it okay so fetch lands is going to be the glaring one that people question when i first looked at doing this in my mind i wanted to start with the miser's cube add shocks and fetches and then fill out the rest right here's the problem 10 fetch lands is approximately like $350 alone. Yeah, that sounds about right. And shocks come in at like between 15 and 25 bucks a pop. Yeah, there's actually some kind of expensive shock lands. Yeah, so what happened is I added those to the miser's cube and I was at like $1,100. Yeah. So uh, yeah, fetches didn't make it because that let us build the rest of the cube. This speaks to a problem with magic in general of the fetch lands are an unacceptable price range. It's batshit that they haven't been reprinted more. It's actually like bordering on criminal. I think we should hire the Pinkertons is what I'm saying and have them go confiscate the fetch lands from Wizards of the Coast. Ah, brilliant. I agree with you. (laughs) <laughs> but it is one of those that like we have other options for the shock lands like there are other dual typed lands that are not the og duels or shock lands there's not really anything for fetch yeah we get to have some really nice lands honestly like i was even able to afford the rest of the horizon cycle right the land base honestly i like it it's tough because i've always kind of liked cubes that don't have fetch lands just because it speeds up gameplay a noticeable amount it's tough to say fetches are are not going to be missed when obviously i would miss them but at the same time i think there is legitimate reasons beyond just budget to not include fetches in your list yeah and so here's the other thing that's missing due to fetches being gone 
With them gone, I looked at what was left for a Lands Matters theme and like a playing Lands from the Yard and stuff like that. And it was feasible, but it wasn't worth it at that point. I couldn't get it where I was happy with it. So that theme got dropped. That makes sense. So while I consider this a very normal cube with a lot of the support types you'd expect to see for different archetypes, there is not a Lands Matters type theme or a playing Lands from the Yard or however you want to say that. There's no Renin 6. Renin 6 was the only other expensive card for that deck that was an easy cut the rest of them i cut them and put other stuff in right and i mean that's always been the thing with that deck the lands matters deck is expensive because of those few cards and the rest are filler type thing so if you're missing the fetches yeah it makes sense to just cut it and with that all gone i looked at strip mine wasteland and rashad and port and i was like i'm just gonna cut these with them it's not worth having them in uh you don't get to do any cool loops with them they're just value land destruction wasteland is like 25 bucks The other two aren't that bad, but it just wasn't worth having them in, so they're out too. Yeah, I kind of get it. It is disappointing, but you still have, like, Field of Ruin, so there is a Valve to deal with your land base if it's a problem. Like, It's also just, it's not very needed. Yeah, it's not really needed, but it's nice to have out when there are existing outs type thing. Yeah, like, the land you're destroying is going to be, like, a man land, and that's the extent of it. There's nothing really crazy going on. Hey, man, don't be hating on that Raging Ravine. It'll get you dead. Yeah, so we did get the shocks in. It's a little bit rough because, yeah, they're, like, over $15 for most of them still, but that's fine. I think it's worth it on that point because it does feel a lot more like you're not budget restricted. Mm Mm-hmm, and it was one of my, like requirements when i looked at this was i want as many classic cube cards that you expect to see and like you associate with cube right with the miser's cube and the starter cube it's very common that you miss out on things like a worm coil engine and stuff like that because we're playing a lower power level in you're trying not to like upset the balance of the cube you're trying to keep it low price like the gristle brand exactly gristle brand is a great example That's not a fun card if you don't have answers to it and the ability to get to those answers. And it just sits there at an awkward price range where when you're in a super budget list, you can't really go for it. Yeah, but when you are able to expand that budget a bit, this list fits for it. There's enough support. There's enough answers. It basically works. Yeah, so like outside of a few like extreme cases, um, fuck Ragavan. (laughs) I think that's fair. Renin 6, like, outside of a couple of cases, if you expect to see the card in a cube and it's not a fetch land, it's pretty much here. Like, we've got Show and Tell. We've got Stoneforge Mystic is the most expensive card in the cube right now. I have it on good authority that it's totally getting reprinted for real, for real. Yeah, for real, for real. <laughs> Stoneforge, Show and Tell, Dark Confidant, Snapcaster Mage is criminally low price now because apparently it's just not good enough in Magic anymore. Thoughtseize, Damnation, Natural Order. We've got three swords, and they're all good. There are a few missing things. Like you said, like Ragavan. There's also like Force of Will. That doesn't make any sense to need for the price point of it. Force of Will is unfortunately like never going to be a price range I can put into one of these cubes. I also don't believe Force of Will is that strong in limited play. Like outside of playing a very combo centric cube, Force of Will is incredibly bad. I disagree on incredibly bad. You're much better off playing Force of Negation instead. Yes. Force of Will is a historic card, but it's not a fantastic cube card. Yeah. I mean, I still think it is good enough. It's not a bad card, but like, I'm going to be picking my hard counter for two mana. I'm going to be picking my force of negation before it. Like, force of will is a toy. Yeah, and that's fair. It doesn't need to be in there. No Eureka. That's a toy. Yeah, Eureka again. It's only in my cube because I bought it when it was like $40 and thought it was a cute card. Like, I would never pay for it nowadays. It's a fun toy, but it's just a toy. So, not needed. But other than, like, those types of things, basically everything's here. Yeah, there's a few walkers who are too expensive. Like, I'm still not playing Mind Sculptor. It is right on the edge still. We've got Will Kenrith. Uh, uh, yeah, Will Kenrith is so fucking backbreaking in control. Yeah. We still have good walkers, like, throughout the cube. 
we're still getting to play like the two best Chandras. In my opinion, the best Lily, you could argue one way or the other. I think it's pretty obvious Last Hope is the best one nowadays. Yeah, like I had Lily of the Veil in here too, but I ended up cutting her just when I was like trying to make some final cuts. Yeah. And I'm like, I'd rather just have Last Hope out of the two. So when I cut one, it was that. Yeah, with just the amount of tokens around nowadays and just how games play. Yeah. Veil is still good, but Last Hope, I think, just did works out better. So not a big deal. The point is, basically everything you could want is here. You've got the grade A fatties, you've got your worm coil engines, you can reanimate a grizzle brand in this cube. A sundering titan. You've got <laughs> all of the classic toys. If you've dreamed of it, it's here. We've got all of the classic board wipes in this cube too. Damnation, Wrath of God, everything you want to see. I mean, obviously all of the removal spells because those are always cheap as fuck, so got it. <laughs> We're able to put in uh, Umazawa's Jite, three swords, all of which I like. So you've got Light and Shadow, Once and Future, and Sinew and Steel are all great prices right now and again you still get grafted war gear heirloom blade we're playing a very equipment heavy aggro deck so we actually have stuff like cranial plating too which is actually quite strong if you're playing that deck right so yeah you have a lot of good equipments in this cube a lot of good options all around depending on which deck you want to go into so i guess let's talk about some of the decks available to you yeah i mean you've got all the generals the aggro mid-range control ramp tempo you name it if the color is trying to do it it's there but there's also thematic decks and the one that i i guess we'll get it out of the way because it's one of the interesting ones that you've brought up the plus one plus one counters and really just the counters deck Let's take a minute to talk about this one. I talked about it on the last episode and the one before that, I think even, but uh, the point is, I think the plus one plus one counters deck is very real nowadays. It takes very little support because when I was building this cube, before adding in my specific cards for it, I had something like 90 cards that dealt with counters in some way. Yeah. And that's just because a lot of good creatures deal with plus one plus one counters nowadays. There's just a lot of good stuff that incidentally dealt with it already. So then I just sprinkled in like Ozolith, Hardened Scales, changed around a couple of my creature choices. We went with Verderous Gear Hulk instead of Thrag Tusk just because they're both very good in a pod deck, but if you're going to play one of them in a counter deck, you might as well make it Gear Hulk. Like little choices like that sprinkled throughout to make it more to the forefront. Yeah, and I think that that's one of the things is like a lot of the creatures that were slightly tuned and you picked something slightly different kind of thing is all like they're basically the same thing as what you replaced it with like it was a mid-range creature that i'm replacing with a mid-range creature that deals with plus one plus one counters yeah and it's like little things like query and beast caller a perfectly serviceable mid-range two drop yeah you could have several different variations on what you want in your mid-range green two drop creature this is in the top five whatever you would want to pick so we went with this one because it's counter themed in addition exactly scavenging ooze already had counters on it like little things like that didn't even need a choice counters also played well because a lot of the things that dealt with counters were there because we were playing creature combo already yep which stayed in this iteration of the cube i think it's a fantastic intro to combo wins in cube yeah and we've proven it enough that like it's strong and it's interesting but it's not this like dumb combo where you're like wow why did i not draft that why didn't i force that kiki jiki pastor mike being the one that we've always hated where like yeah. You can play it for like six months in your cube, enjoy it, and then you immediately take it out because you're like, okay, I'm done with every blue-red deck, just throwing this in there. Yeah. And like, you either go one way or the other. You either take it out because it's like, yeah, we've had enough, or you're like, I'm going to go all in and I'm going to make a combo cube. Yeah. But like, the creature combo that we've talked about, you know, the, the persist combo, it just is solid. It does its job pretty well in a mid-ranged style deck, and... It holds its own, but it's also not oppressive. So it makes sense that if you're going to try and push plus one plus one counters as like a general theme, then that creature combo plus one plus one is going to work out very well. Yeah. And uh, to move into a lot of the more quick and self-explanatory things you can see in here, uh, we splashed in some extra humans for the human archetype, so you can play that as your aggro slant. 
Pod decks, as I just mentioned, exist. You can have any token-heavy list you can dream of because tokens are on everything nowadays. <sighs> yeah. Instead of going with like my ninja's tempo thing in blue black, I had been doing in the budget cubes. I went back to artifacts. A because I am a big fan of the artifacts deck, and B because we had more budget, so why not flex a little? So anyway, that we also have a whole self mill thing going on. You can do your Thassa Oracle Jace. Exactly. You can do uh, self mill type stuff in like a more Golgari mid rangey deck, like Grist. All of that exists too. Spells matter super good everything is here for it so you can just play a very nice blue red spells deck and enjoy your life yeah and i mean that one's a more general purpose kind of deck but there's enough support for it being self mill without just being thassa's oracle jace so yeah cool and then of course you like spells matters exist in like the is it section so you can play blue red x control and just play a very spellsy control deck and enjoy your life oh yeah dude it's it's all i'm so happy about it all being there museum tank Hell yeah, boy. Two of the big unfair winners, in my opinion, is cheating to play decks with Sneak and Show, uh, Natural Order, stuff like that, finally existing in one of the budget cubes. Sneak and Show is huge. Like, that's an entire, like, archetype that we haven't really been able to break into on the budget cubes. Yeah. Just being able to have Natural Order in your ramp decks so that you can have unfair wins at times. That's massive. That helps a lot with ramps problems. It really, it really does. Because Natural Order can go from you're very far behind to not only stabilizing but becoming the board dominant position and just one card really because the rest of your deck exists yeah yeah it's very noticeable and the other big winner being reanimate yeah we just get all the good reanimate cards <laughs> grave titan grizzlebrand reanimate itself uh, we're missing one all we're missing is necromancy which is terrible well in recurring nightmare Okay, and Recurring Nightmare, but I don't care. It's not even the same deck, in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's a whole debate. It's a mid-range card. I agree with you, but at the same time. <laughs> but Necromancy is the one I didn't put in. It's expensive and not good, so skipped. Right. There is enough support that you will be able to play Reanimate as you would normally. Aristocrats, obviously, here. Equipment-focused aggro is here. Uh, you could go as far as to say it's like flat out artifact aggro i would say it's equipment based but there's artifact aggro because there's a lot of equipments that are also like aggressive creatures uh, we've got reinforced ronin we've got arcbound javelinier which actually works with the counters thing like you could make arguments gold hound good doggo yeah basically all of the equipments that just like come with bodies like ancestral blade like all of that kind of works together in this like equipment artifact aggro there's enough synergies between them that they become one deck kind of yeah and while we're in red white resto conscripts exist in here it's like kiki combo but not nearly as strong yeah it's it's okay so i don't really want to bring it up but at the same time like i accept that it is a combo that does exist but you don't build a deck around it you don't draft around it you go oh i was in a deck that happens to have Resto Angel in Zealous Conscripts. <laughs> no one value plays Splinter Twin, but no. you will value play Zealous Conscripts. Yeah, and it is nice to have some of that kind of combo stuff in there. So we've got Wildfire. Of course we do. This is probably the cap for where Wildfire is good anymore, and I'm still stretching it to make it here, but fuck it. You know what? This is a solely singleton-focused cube, and Wildfire is going to be in the fucking cube. There may or may not be a certain five-drop in green in this cube. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if I'll see <laughs> something that says put two target lands on top of their owner's library. <laughs> The artist is shown in the art. Yeah, just a little bit. And similarly, there's Flicker. There's some Flicker cards. It's not like a full theme theme, but like the good ones are in here. People just love flickering stuff. I get it. So like Ephemerate's still in here. I actually really like Touch the Spirit Realm now. We've got Yorian here because Yorian's just fun. I think that that one's very much a uh, artist is showing through. I like Yorian. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I agree. And it is one of those, like, the flicker is just a little bit of spice to help add some flair to it. It's not like a flicker deck exists. It's, you can have some fun with it. Yeah, when you're playing a tempo deck, you're probably going to play Soul Herder anyway, because Soul Herdering a bunch of Mana War variants is very strong. Yeah, it tends to do pretty well. So, it's all in here for the most part. You've got what you need. This is what $1,000 looks like for a cube. It's a cube. If this was your cube <laughs> and you said, hey, I've got a cube, but we cap out at Shocklands, there's no fetches. I'd be like, great. And I would expect to see this cube. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those that like there is room for your own personal flares, your own personal take on it type thing. And we we've got wildfire. Not everybody's going to want to run wildfire. That's fine. But the general power level, the general expectation of yeah, you've got Gideon Ally Zendikar, you've got Chandra Torto Defiance, you've got actual land bases that, yeah, it's not fetch, but everything else is probably fine. That's the expectation of what you would, like, sitting down, like, okay, yeah, this is a cube, I don't have to draft in a weird slant way because your cube has a weird list. Yeah, like, as weird as it gets is, like, I have the bridges for some fixing in the Grixis spectrum. They're about on par with a temple, it's just they work better with the artifact deck that's fair like it's a perfectly reasonable thing i'm running them in my cube go fuck yourself they're good cards <laughs> which in your cube still debatable in my opinion but i really think they're very good in my cube honestly like they're they're a core part of hitting the, it gets into a whole artifact deck thing but like yeah and, and it's like i defer my judgment to you because you're the more expert on that so it's fine i i, I accept that i'm probably wrong besides they're indestructible it really helps when i took all the land destruction out <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. I do enjoy that there are a few actually spicy cards. Like, you managed to get a Nico Bolas in here. Hell yeah, dude. It's probably not good. That's okay, though. I wanted to put Nico Bolas Dragon God in, but he was, like, over the $10 mark. And I was like, I've always enjoyed God Pharaoh. He's, like, two bucks. I'll just use him instead. Yeah. Whatever you want, play whichever one, play neither, it doesn't matter. I am a fan of Bolas, I am happy he's here. Yeah, and I think that that's really where, in my opinion, one of the strengths of the Grand Cube is. You get a bit of leeway that you can just, a $2.50 card, a $3 card, you can just play it without having to completely defend the choice. Yes, when we do another update for Miser's Cube or Starter Cube... It's always the, look, I had to add in this 10 cent card I don't like because I wanted this dollar fifty card that I liked. And with this, it's like, I add what I wanted to the cube and I got to the mark without much effort. Yeah. I'm 40 bucks under budget still, as far as Cube Cobra is concerned. Like, it doesn't matter. And that is cool. We're very much, like you said, you added to where you wanted it to be. There were a few restrictions, but generally it was... You didn't have to focus on every card has to defend its spot to the death over each penny kind of thing. No, this is just a cube. It's solid. It, it's fun. Yeah, starter cube can be miserable to update. I've made that very clear in the past. This cube was very simple. Like, as much as it took a long time to actually find time to sit down and completely design a new cube, I didn't spend 50 hours staring at different prices on TCG Player trying to find the right printing of each card. I just found one that was in a price range that didn't make me puke and said good. I think another benefit fit to this one in the future this list the grand cube that we currently have it's going to be more money that's just how magic cards are they go up but i don't expect it to be that much more i was gonna say over the last two years i don't have to update either of the budget cubes at this point other than i want to add some new cards and you know change some flavor out a bit but they haven't really moved in price it's not like the olden days where Watsy would go, you know, a year and a half without printing a random uncommon, it would sneak up to $5. They're vomiting sets out every three minutes. No one has enough money to buy every set anymore. That is true. And there's always more options to every effect, essentially. And we're, let's be honest here, we're in the power creep era. Yeah. There's been Ragavans and Merktide regents and shit ruining the game. You can afford a lightning bolt. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is true. At least for now. I mean, maybe one day Lightning Bolt will be never reprinted for 10 years. <laughs> 
yeah, I mean, overall, the Grand Cube feels like a cube that has very little compromise beyond it doesn't have the OG duels and fetch. Yeah, that was the design goal of this. If you went out and bought this, you probably spent too much money, but who am I to judge anymore? I've spent way more than this on Magic. Honestly, this is the kind of list that, like, it'll be fun for quite a while. It looks a lot like my cube. Yeah, and it's got a lot of the different archetypes, but at the same time, none of them are like so degenerate and like obvious, the most powerful thing that like you can have fun just putting interesting drafts together. So I like it. Yeah, I wholly endorse this if you were to go out and buy it. I think this is a great starting point for your collection, just like with the Miser's Cube or the Starter Cube. You can check those out. I'm sure I'll be updating them again this year at some point, possibly soon since I've been in the mood to update cubes recently. Also, if you had the Starter Cube and the Miser's Cube, take a look at this. These are some potential avenues to upgrade and slot some new things in. Yeah, you don't have to go this direction but it is a direction you could go from either of those exactly all right i think that about does it for the week so uh let's get out of here sounds good <laughs>